from Amatullah from New Jersey, USA. What are your views regarding the killing of the black American George Floyd by a white policeman a few days ago? What the sister is referring to is an incident that took place about 12 days ago on the 25th of May 2020 where a black American by the name of George Floyd he was killed in cold-blooded murder by a white American policeman in Municipalis in USA where the white policeman by the name of Derek Chauvin he put his knee on the throat of the black American George Floyd and when he screamed the black person black uh, black American George Floyd when he screamed please I cannot breathe he yet the white policeman continued putting pressure by his knee on the throat of the black man for more than eight minutes and he killed him in cold blood not only that there were three policemen who were colleagues of Derek Chauvin who were just watching silently this cold-blooded murder has created protest throughout USA and even outside USA and other countries regarding the racism and the black person was innocent the one of the only reason that he was killed was because he was a black person and the protest against the racism and oppression has gone nationwide throughout USA we Muslims as a whole we stand in solidarity and we completely support the black protests against the racism and oppression throughout the world the Muslims as a whole we are with the black people in this protest and this is completely against humanity and it is also against the teaching of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakrin wa unsa wa jannakum shau ma wa qaba ila li ta'arafu inna karmuk min dhala yad kaqum inna la alimun khabeed O humankind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sight of Almighty God is the person who has taqwa according to the verse of the glorious Quran human beings have come from a single pair of male and female from Adam and Eve may peace be upon them both and the humankind Almighty God has divided into nations and tribes so that they may recognize each other not that they may despise each other and in this verse Allah says that one human being is not superior to another human being whether it be because of color of the skin one human being is not superior to the other human being because of race because of wealth neither is he superior because of age because of gender the only criteria which makes one human being superior to the other it is taqwa it is God consciousness it is piety it is righteousness so according to the verse of the Quran all human beings are equal whether they are black or white yellow or brown rich or poor king or pauper the only criteria that makes them superior is taqwa it's God consciousness it's piety it is righteousness and a beloved Prophet Muhammad he said in his farewell pilgrimage he said oh humankind you have been created from one pair of Adam and Eve peace be upon them both and he said that no Arab is superior to a non-Arab neither is a non-Arab superior to an Arab a white man is not superior to a black man neither is a black man superior to a white man the only reason that differentiates them is taqwa it is piety it is God consciousness it is righteousness and our beloved poet Muhammad he was not a non-racist non-racist are those people who do not practice racism but the prophet was an anti-racist the anti-racist they fight against racism 
the non racist people don't fight against racism so our beloved prophet sallallahu sallam was one of the first human beings who said this in his favorite pilgrimage that no arab is a superior to non arab neither is a white man superior to a black man nor is a black man superior to a white man he was one of the first human being who was very much against racism he was anti racist and you see that in several sira in several incidents of the sira of the prophet of the life history of the prophet and we know that when the prophet peace be upon him migrated to medina and when they built the mosque he told bilal may allah be pleased with him who was a black abyssinian slave he told him to give the azan the call for prayer imagine there were so many people arabs of superior races of of high lineage but he chose a black abyssinian slave bilal may allah be pleased with him to give the call for prayer and similarly when he did fatih makkah when he came back to makkah and when he was victorious he told the same person the black abyssinian slave hazrat bilal may allah be pleased with him to give the adhan he chose him in preference to all the other companions he had there were many other arabs of high lineage coming from a royal family many of the sahabas but he chose a black person this shows that the prophet peace be upon him did not differentiate between two human beings only because of color and allah says in the glorious quran allah says in surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 135 that ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o oh, you believe stand out firmly for justice as witness to allah subhanahu wa taala even if it be against yourself against your parents or your relatives whether it be rich or poor allah protects all so this verse of the quran says when you stand out for justice you should be firm even if it be against yourself even if that justice is against your parents against your relative whether it be rich or poor standing for justice is of very high importance in islam here the color of a skin or the wealth of a person does not make you give a judgment in the person's favor and allah says in the quran in surah rum chapter number 30 verse number 22 that amongst his signs he has created the heavens and the earth and he created the variation in your languages and color so allah subhanahu wa taala has made different people of different colors and have made them speak different languages so that you can recognize them so that you may know their lineage it is not to oppress one person or the other but it is for recognition so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and islam besides being anti racist it practically demonstrates universal brotherhood in various aspects of life and the best example i can give you is hajj in islam the fifth pillar of islam is hajj every muslim who has the means and the health and the wealth to perform hajj should at least perform hajj that is pilgrimage to makkah and the surrounding areas in the month of hajj at least once in his lifetime and here you find that millions of people from different parts of the world gather it is the biggest annual gathering where about 3 to 4 million people gather in makkah and the surrounding areas and the men they are dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth you cannot make out the person standing next to you whether he is a king or a pauper whether he is rich or poor and you find people from all over the world from america from canada from uk from saudi arabia from pakistan from india as as from bangladesh from indonesia from malaysia all over the world black white yellow brown rich poor dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth white cloth labbaik allahumma labbaik here i am oh my lord here i am coming to the service of allah subhanahu wa taala only to worship him it is the best example of universal brotherhood and if you know the history of malcolm x his name was malik shahbaz al hajj when he went hajj for the first time i think it was somewhere in the 50s and 60s that time the people were much less he was shocked when he performed hajj he was shocked and he wrote in a letter i can see tens of thousands of muslims with blue eyed blonde hair 
mixing with black people. This I could not imagine can be a reality in USA. And he was shocked and that made him change completely. And as you know, Malcolm X was one of, one of the greatest people live, who lived a few decades earlier who fought against racism, who fought against oppression. The other example that, the, that we Muslims have and which we demonstrate in our daily life is we offer five times Salah. When we offer five times Salah in congregation, in the mosque, when we stand for Salah, we Muslims, the men, they stand shoulder to shoulder and feet to feet. The person next to you, irrespective whether he's rich or poor, whether king or pauper, whether black or white, whether yellow or brown, when we Muslims stand for Salah, we stand shoulder to shoulder. We practically demonstrate universal brotherhood minimum five times a day in our life. Other people talk about universal brotherhood. We practically demonstrate it every day, five times a day in our daily life. And this example that we have is not seen in any other way of life, in any other society, in any other religion. Regarding the murder that was done by a white police officer in Minneapolis, Derek Chauvin of a black American by the name of George Floyd is to be condemned. It was not only, it was not only racism, it was not only oppression, it was murder. And in Islam, murder is the second major sin. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if any person kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Allah says in the Quran, if any human being kills any other innocent human being, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And this cold-blooded murder, we Muslims condemn. Furthermore, oppression is the 26th major sin in Islam. This is also prohibited. This is nothing but oppression and injustice. And injustice is also a major sin in Islam. We Muslims support the black community throughout the world. And the cry of George Floyd, please, I cannot breathe. Please don't kill me in the video recording when the white policeman is throttling him with his knee for more than eight minutes will remain in our mind, will always come up whenever there is an act of racism, oppression done to any human being.